Hey guys, this is Fei Wu from Fei's World Media. I am so glad every time I hit the record button because I know you guys are watching and uh, thank you for allowing me to do that during this crisis. It means so much. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about how to reduce or perhaps even avoid the delay you constantly see on big Zoom screens. If you are a fitness instructor, if you are a dance instructor, I know you guys hate it so much because you know, you don't want to hear your students to say that wasn't a great experience because the music was moving at a different speed compared to your cues or, or how you're moving, how you're teaching. That's super annoying. So in this video, I want to point out a couple of obvious reasons, but also some non-trivial ways to improve the speed because guess what? Every little bit counts. <laughs> Let's get started. Number one, you need decent internet speed. I cannot emphasize this enough. Zoom requires that if you're a broadcaster, meaning you're the host, you're the instructor, teacher, you need a minimum of three Mbps for upload and a minimum of two, I believe, two to three for download. In the situation we're in, in the coronavirus crisis, unfortunately, it means that you're sharing the internet sometimes with your neighbors. And depending on how your internet is set up, it's just safer and wiser to have better internet access. I have the Verizon Fios Gigabyte package, and I got this late last year because I'm also a filmmaker. Honestly, I wasn't gonna go for uh, such a premium package, but it really made a huge difference. Now considering the situation that we're in, that I'm constantly publishing on YouTube, it really helps hugely. Now, not just your internet, your internet is extremely important because you are broadcasting. Now, your student's internet matters too. So it doesn't hurt as you move along with your fitness career online, it is to ask your students to run speedtest.net and to make sure that their internet is reasonable. Now imagine if they're walking outside somewhere, uh, taking a walk and they try to watch you, you teach dance or fitness classes on their smartphone, uh, chances are it might not be the best quality. You know, really depends. Or it can be pretty good at the beginning and slowly starts to degrade. Uh, that could happen. Now let's talk about the second thing besides internet is that you want to turn off your students' videos. You cannot turn off your video because you're teaching. Now, I know everybody loves to see everyone else. I've joined these Zumba classes with sometimes 40, 50 participants. There was one time 350 participants for a beloved Ketty Rosenfeld teaching Zumba and everybody had their video on. So while it's lovely to scroll through pages and feel like you're part of a tribe, somehow it will slow down and degrade the quality of your video. So if it really becomes a serious issue, I would highly recommend that you consider turning off the videos from all your participants and just let them know at the beginning of the call that you know what, we get to mingle and hang out at the beginning and after uh, our session is complete. However, in between, please ask them to turn on video. Now, the third thing is chat. Believe it or not, people are chatting away. One thing that for certain fitness classes, if you're teaching something that's very intricate and it's serious, it's actually better for your students not to run back and forth during class to chat with each other. Even though that's the social life we all want and need right now, it's important to pay attention. Therefore, it's not a bad idea to turn off chat. Now, how do you replace it? What if something happens, people have questions and, and for bigger, I know that for some of you bigger gyms, you even have supervisors joining the sessions with these students and participants, what can you do? Well, I noticed some of the instructors try to start their own uh, WhatsApp account. WhatsApp is free to use and they would just start those groups on WhatsApp. That's not a bad idea. Number four, this is often overlooked, which is instead of streaming music directly from Spotify, you're streaming as you're teaching, you can actually download that playlist and you're able to basically play music directly from your computer without live streaming music, if that makes sense. So that's it. It's actually a pretty short list. I'm going to recap, basically confirm solid internet access from your end and your student's end. And number two, turn off videos. This is huge, turn off the student's videos. Number three, disable chats. And chat can be disabled under uh, zoom.us under settings. And uh, number four, which is to download your playlist so that you're not streaming music while you're teaching. If you know anything else that significantly improves the quality of your teaching, your video, 
please let us know. And uh, I, I will be all ears. I love this forum to allow us to learn from each other. It's really a two-way street. Hey, Faye back here. I'm doing some post-production and editing because as you know, the things with live streaming and particular with Zoom, is changing at the speed of light. So a couple of things I want to add to this list, which is if you're still experiencing sync issues between your music, your movements versus what the students are seeing, then I recommend that you consider instead of just teaching with your laptop, but to also uh, use a mobile device, logging in as if you were a participant, then you can actually hear the music exactly as your students are experiencing it. Now, I have future videos coming up soon, but before I release them, I would like to just give you a heads up and a hint to a way of syncing your music perfectly with everyone in your class, which is this app called JQBX, which I'll provide a link below as well. The app is completely free. The only prereq is that you and all your students do need the Spotify license so that you can sync your music. So the idea is pretty simple. You are the DJ as the instructor and you host a private room. Your students will not be able to change your music, but you can curate a playlist, exactly the one you're using for your class, hit play, and everybody's music is completely in sync. Now, I want to thank this community again because now we have our second sponsor here on YouTube and their name is Survey Sparrow. They are a survey company based in California and they reached out to me for me to talk about the importance of survey and customer engagement. Because as a live streamer, as an instructor, turns out your students are your customers. Just because the chat is open sometimes while you're teaching doesn't mean that they can give you the fuller feedback. Also, I have a series of courses coming up to teach people like yourself how to market to your students, how to brand yourself, position yourself beyond an online streamer, a teacher who may be teaching for free, but you have other products and services that can be part of your brand as well. So surveying your customers now before they're gone is very important. Survey Sparrow is a leading product in the industry. They have so many templates you can use right away. Yes, they have the business and enterprise versions, but they also have a very affordable version for independent creators like you, like me. So definitely check it out. I'll include a link below. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with other instructors, people in need, and invite them into our Facebook group, which is called Dance Livestream and Videos. You are able to search for that, or I'll include a convenient link below in the description. Last but not least, please consider checking out our Patreon page. It means so much for you to make that contribution, no matter how small, $3, $9, $20 a month. Thank you so much in advance. It really helps creative uh, entrepreneurs like myself. And um, before you leave, hit the subscribe button, the bell button, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.